back and thank you very much to Megan, Marco and Cherry for showing an additional interest into TDH and pH and organic versus inorganic media and why I said in my starter kit video regarding supplies I wish somebody would have told me from the get-go about TDS and pH meters. Now I'm going to make this so diluted let's say using the liquid term but I want to make this so vanilla that it's not somebody that has already grown orchids and done this for the next for the last 10 years for example. I want to put myself back into my position that I was in when I started and then realized because I moved house or something my orchids weren't doing well or they just died and I always said I've never done anything else I've always used my tap water I have always done this that and the other back then or let's say back then also when I was growing in Kenya it was all rain very rarely was there any hosing down because the dew points are so high and so humid and the conditions were completely different so my big change came when I started having to grow orchids in pots and I had to figure out why when I moved house something happened I just couldn't get it right and digging like a weevil like a mole I, I finally reached the point it has to be the water because I eliminated every other variable of what had changed I eliminated that and the water was the problem then I started more digging and then you know we are where we are now and here I am trying to make a video that is going to be somewhat interesting concise but yet very easy to understand because I don't want this to be a long video I would say after this video being vanilla if you want to know more next video I would highly recommend I'm gonna link it below is from Fernanda Nacimento Orchids and Succulents a fantastic video that actually relaxes you while you watch it because this can be somewhat of a little bit of an anxious topic and the next stage super advanced level is from the orchid room and I will put the links in below but let me just get really quickly started into these two gadgets I have here my RO water plane to keep rinsing my pH and TDS meter so that's my base solution okay I've already put my pH meter into plain faucet water and you can see it the pH in my area is at 10.7 that is insanity sometimes it can be 8 sometimes 9 it doesn't mean that your water is the same I'm giving you an example please remember an example as to why I wish somebody right at the beginning would have told me about these two little gadgets that were life, life changers game changers for my orchids because if I didn't know or didn't put my a pH meter into my faucet water I would think everything is fine look at this 10.8 I'm going to write that down as a reference so that is a terrible terrible day so the next one I just want to check what my plain water is doing TDS wise this is no fertilizer added nothing whatsoever and look at it it's almost 200 today is a good day sometimes I get 350 right off the bat today is a good day not pH wise but TDS wise there's no fertilizer in there at all so the plain water is at 197 now my next thing that I want to do is show you my faucet water pH with the same amount of fertilizer that I always do when I mix up my batch in the mornings with RO water you can see there's hardly any movement and that is why I talk about pH down and we'll get to that in a minute so let's just say it's 10.4 we're not going to 
be all that exact. The point here is not to be super exact about what we're reading, it's to show you the principle of why these two gadgets are so important. So we're at 10.5 now. We were with the pH before at 10.8. Okay, let's switch them. Gosh, I feel I'm abusing my gadgets here. All right, now this is my fertilized water with exactly the same mixture that I do every morning into my RO bucket. And now I have exactly the same fertilizer in, exactly the same. Look at those numbers. I hope you can see them. If not, they're right now reading at 5.75 of fertilized water, of which only 370 is fertilizer, if we want to do a rough mathematics. That is insane for orchids. That is absolutely insane. Well, we're still going up, but again, the principle, please, okay? That is a number I would never ever feed, not even my Vandas, unless I need to get rid of something fast and I would do it only once and then I would immediately take out a fraction and dilute it down. That is something orchids cannot tolerate. Absolutely, they wouldn't get that in nature. So now let me move on, clean you up. Let's go to my pH of my plain RO water. You see how quickly that is dropping? I'm expecting today with a 10 pH. Whew, I'm, I don't know what I'm expecting today, maybe 8.9, maybe nine. But we can come back when that has settled down a bit. And then here in the back, I'm going to soak for 24 hours plain bark in plain RO water. Just sphagnum moss in plain RO water, lava rock, and my lecker. And we'll measure afterwards when they've soaked for 24 hours and see what goes on. All right, my plain RO water is at 9.8, that is today's harvest, based on the numbers that we saw earlier. Okay, let's move you along to the fertilized RO water and move you into the plain RO water. And you can see the fertilized water is at 6.2 because that is my component of ready mix of what I'm using today for my orchids. 6.2, that is fine. I have uh, run out of um, pH down so today I'm at 6.2 but when we get to the nutrients section I'll tell you why I'm okay with that for now and you can see here I hope 12 my plain RO water has now dropped from 197 TDS to 12 parts per million that is exactly what I want to see to show you the difference. My fertilized pH was at 6. Point, is it, what are you now, 6.1? Even better, 6.19. Yeah, I'll take that. No problem whatsoever, we'll put that away. And let's see what I have got in my TDS for my fertilizer today. So you see, the TDS is going up, but the bracket, the difference between what it was in the fertilized tap water compared to what I have now as fertilizer in my RO water minus what was in there initially 12, no biggie, we're around 350 parts per million. Why is this so important? Because if you had not known, let's say, that what's coming out of your tap, then you add the recommended dose of fertilizer you are doubling, in my case, the quantity of minerals and salts, etc., in your water. That is called hard water. What I have here is hard water, like super hard water. If you're in an area, for example, where your tap water comes out at 60, maybe 70 is pushing it a bit, but let's say 60, parts per million. Then you add your fertilizer, you're still absolutely fine and within range. And that is why it's so difficult 
to ascertain that, hey, I've been using tap water for years. Yeah. Have you checked your water and why somebody else cannot? Because I used to use tap water for years and then I moved house and I continued using tap water and then something happened and I, was, I couldn't figure out what it was. So if I put my TDS meter into my tap water, you might walk out and say, I've only got 50 parts per million in my tap water and I'm gonna go, you are so lucky. <laughs> you are so lucky to have that. Keep doing what you're doing, don't worry about it. Give this video a like just for the effort, but perfect. But it is fundamental and the TDS meter will tell you that. It's a simple thing in my area. Obviously, I need to use it almost every day to double check what's coming out of my pipes. Not the talking ones, but you know, the water pipes. <laughs> but um, that's just a little vanilla setup to show you how important knowing what is in your water as far as your total dissolved solids is concerned. So I'm hoping that makes sense. Um, of course, if not, please let me know. Now, when it comes to pH, orchids live in the wild, we know that. The majority of us are growing epiphytic orchids, so not the terrestrial ones. The terrestrial ones have a different ball game because they are in soil and debris on the ground like any house plant might be, and there is a different level of acidity in the soil, which will give a balance of what kind of pH the roots find themselves in, in order to absorb nutrients. So you'll see, I've mocked up this little chart, very, very basic. We can go into the fractions if we want, but again, this is vanilla. This is just so that the concept is there and the understanding of why we talk about P, A, P, M, T, D, S and all. It's just, it's just semantics. If you look at this chart, take a screenshot, by the time you've done it two or three times, you don't even need to think about this anymore. Because the only thing you will see here that I highly recommend, regardless of where you live, regardless of whether you grow inorganic or organic, all right? You need to know your pH because you will see all these minerals, elements, and the micro elements at what pH range they actually get absorbed by the orchid. When I talked previously about being at 5.8, maximum 6.3, this is because I grow inorganic. My water comes out at a horrendous, horrendous pH. And I have to bring all that down in order for my orchids to absorb the nutrients in a balanced way. If I go too high, like 6.5 in order for calcium, phosphorus, potassium, I'm only targeting, targeting one area. If I go too low, I'm losing out on the majority of the big guys that I also need. So I don't confuse myself with today I'm going at 6.5, next day I'm going at 5.8. I have one thing, I need to really keep it simple to make it click in my brain. I go, because I have such a high pH, it reflects in my soaking water as well, even though it's RO. What I get out of the tap, that is exactly what I'm soaking my inorganic media in. I have to take that into consideration because when I pot up my orchids into any of these inorganic media, I need to know what pH am I putting them in. And for me, that usually is around eight in the pot where the roots are. So my reservoirs are always filled with 5.8, as you see the red line, because in the process of absorbing the liquid through the microfiber and through the LECA that has a higher pH, that pH will be lowered and balance itself out to approximately 6.3, 6.5, by which time the roots have had all the nutrients that they needed. And that can take a day, it can take two weeks, it can take whatever it takes for the reservoir 
or in a semi-hydro manner to absorb. In inorganic, it's a different ballgame because you might actually be watering more frequently. And that's why I recommend then 6.3 because if you can't get a nutrient down to 5.8 fast enough every time you water, you might lose out on the small little macro elements because by that time you're watering again at, if you want, 6.5. But you always want watering the top number of what can be absorbed, whereas if you go down to 6.3, there's a chance the acidity in the pot of inorganic media will help in adjusting the pH further down so that your orchids can get the balanced nutrition from the lesser pH absorbed nutrients. Does that make sense? <laughs> for me, if I'm just going to summarize it all for this part and tomorrow, well, soon in this case, but I will measure the water of all my, my little Greek yogurt pots. Yay for Greek yogurt. For me, that's why I would like to just emphasize 5.8 is your minimum if you're doing inorganic media and 6.3 is your maximum if you're doing organic media and by that time your orchids should be able to absorb all the nutrients balanced 24 hours later in a blink of an eye so let's see what our pHs are in just bark. I'm going to, I checked the video yesterday and I could see that I wasn't actually always showing the screen. So I'm gonna try and do it this way. But basically this is mainly about pH and the change of the pH between organic and inorganic. So yesterday our plain RO water had a pH of an astonishing 10.5. So let's look and see after 24 hours what the bark did to that exceptionally high pH. I am trying to see if you can see the screen. But if you can look at that screen, if you see it, it is dropping down to 8.1 so far. We are at 1.2. That is 24 hours. Considering nutrition absorption in the roots you can see how organic media affects acidity in the pot just imagine if your pot had was wet for 24 hours this is what it would do and it would drop the points down in the pot as well so that would be bark let's take that away and let's look at the sphagnum moss soaked in the same RO water as yesterday. Let me switch it off and back on again. And let's put it into the water. Let me see if I can get you to see the screen. Same thing, we have dropped from the initial 10 ridiculous pH to 8.6 and it's still dropping so again just out of principle it's not like I'm gonna sit here and wait to see how far it's dropped this is for demonstration purposely as to how organic media affects the pH in the pot and why there is a different pH level required if growing in organic media so 8.5 again massive drop if this were in your pot Let's get rid of that. Let's do the lava rock. Remember the water that it was in? Same thing. Our plain RO water. I'm going to switch it off again. I mainly switch it off because I'm never sure if it needs to be reset. So you can see how it's going up. Look at that. And that is because Lava rock is inert. It doesn't affect the pH. 
It just gives you a reading, and if we wait long enough, it'll go up all the way to the pH that we have of the RO water. You see, it's at 10 now. I like to work with inorganic media because of the fact that it is inert. And I can actually control the numbers that go into my pots for fertilizing. But you have to take into account the water that goes for your soaking as well. Because that will be what the leka will have. Because leka is also inert. A few years ago, I thought my leka was the rubbish stuff and that it was raising or lowering the pH, that it was not inert. But I have come to understand now after many, many times practicing and trying to figure this out, it is not the leka either, it is, again, the water. You see the pH? It'll reflect what the leka is soaking in. The leka has not changed the pH. So that needs to be taken into consideration when soaking your leka. And for that reason, I use a lot of pH down. Now, in your case, you may not need that. Again, this is not about what to do, how to do, or why to do with LECA or organic media or lava rock. This is not the discussion. This is just to prove that water is fundamental. You need to know what is in your water in order to then fertilize your orchids correctly. And if you have soft water, like I said, you are a very, very, very lucky grower. And just stick with it with what you are doing and ignore this entire video because this is basically know your water and you will your orchids will thank you for it. I hope this wasn't too tedious or how should I say um, talking in circles. That's not what I wanted to achieve here today. I wanted to show the difference between the necessity of knowing what's in your water and relating that to your pH with how you fertilize your orchids. If you've made it this far, thank you so very, very much. I really appreciate it. Any questions, please feel free to ask and I hope I can clarify them further. In the meantime, I hope this was of help. Thank you for watching everybody. Take care. Bye.